Hi, Mike Torino here. Welcome back to the garage. I think this is going to be our first video of the construction of the main house. So this will be episode 00 of the, the main house construction. I'm up here at the site. We've been moving equipment up here for a few weeks. But today is the what I would say the day one of clearing the lot. I'll just do a little walk around to show you what we have so far. So up here at the site, I erected a little tent uh, for a temporary shelter for, for some of the equipment that we need up here. Uh, and this is just the beginnings of kind of the command center that I'm going to set up. Um, mostly to provide shelter and also as a storage area for all the, the tools and the maintenance equipment I need for my excavator and uh, and the mini skid steer there uh, I've been working with this if you haven't seen the, the video we made of bringing these two pieces of equipment up here you can check that out but they're here now and they're probably never going to leave because it was quite a harrowing experience to get them here what you see see is I'm just taking a kind of a walk around this this property is on a bluff overlooking the river which is that way and it's bounded by that stone wall over there and opposite is there's one fence and there's another fence and both of these properties go all the way back to another stream and in total it's about 1.8 hectare. The area you see here is the main site where the house proposed uh, two-story is going to be. And we've reluctantly we have to cut down some of these coconut trees and some of the fruit bearing trees that you see. Uh, didn't want to do it but obviously you need space for the, the structure and we've got a couple guys helping to do it uh, manually and that's a long process especially the coconut tree has thousands and thousands of tiny roots that give it so much strength it's a, it's incredibly strong and it takes a long time just to try to get at the uh, the root ball with the excavator, let alone doing it by hand. I'll show you what the coconut tree looks like after it's been removed from the ground. This this hole here is is what the guys did by hand, and they just kind of use a um, a maul, you know, with a knife edge to cut the the myriad of roots to finally topple it but they've made this nice neat hole doing it by hand and then this is my attempt to do it by excavator which, which surprisingly is was very difficult because I was using a, I think it's a 24 inch bucket so I switched to the trenching bucket and it was a lot easier but but even that's I'm even, even that, so I'm finding it hard. So tomorrow, next week, I'm going to bring up the uh, the other attachment, and it's called a a ripper. It's just a single tooth uh, attachment that I think it would be a lot easier to rip through these roots. Over here is the rem remnants of uh, one of the rambutan trees here. That it took a while to get that that finally down. I think I've had some video there at the end of us pulling it down and in front of you here is another coconut tree that I was working on today with the excavator. Even though we had to cut down these trees we're going to be able to use the coconut lumber from these trees. We're going to make coconut lumber and that'll be used for scaffolding for the house and for form building. And then, uh, in addition to that, our neighbors and friends came out to uh, 
harvest the, the fronds, the palm fronds, and what they do is they uh, they cut the leaves off and just leave the stem, and uh, they can manufacture a broom out of that, and then uh, make some money that way. And of course, we're going to capture all the coconuts, uh, the young coconuts, and harvest the uh, young coconut meat as well as uh, coconut juice, which we'll probably take some and freeze it. The rambutan tree uh, that we cut down, they're going to take this this wood here and, and convert it to charcoal. So I guess my point is, even though we had to cut down trees that are fruit bearing, that uh, we're at least converting them into secondary sources of use. This is an example of the, the way they repurpose the palm fronds. And this is a large broom. This is what they call Willis Ting Ting, right? The ting Ting? Yeah. After it dries, these will turn brown and uh, they'll stiffen up. And uh, that's one of the two brooms here that's used in the Philippines. This is a Willis Ting Ting and the Willis Tambo is the soft one. But this one is would be like a bristle bristle broom that you might be used in the, in the West. So I'm, I'm here with my brother Dan Dan and uh, right now he's showing showing us how they uh, take the palm fronds kind of like the skeleton of the palm frond and uh, and he's manually shaving it into individual individual things. Here's here's what it looks like from from the tree, and uh, what what they want to get to is the skeleton, and and convert it into that is the finished the finished product. Yeah. So he's just using a regular blade razor blade to do that. It's a long process, but uh, nothing is wasted from the coconut tree. So literally, uh, the coconut tree, all the wood's going to go to lumber. The existing coconuts will be eaten, or the juice will be drank, and even the leaves will be turned into brooms. So, uh, and it's a fast-growing tree, so there's not much heartache about that. The rambutan, on the other hand, uh, is a really delicious fruit. So we hate to cut that down, but that's going to go to create charcoal as well as some income from the selling of that charcoal too. And also this, what, I, what I'm looking at right here is what they call palm heart. And uh, this comes from the top of the coconut tree. And I think it's similar to a, a sprout, like a, a bamboo sprout, but you can use it um, in, in uh, lumpia, in spring rolls, probably in soup and stuff like that. So, lots of things are used from the coconut tree. Oh, behind me is our, you know, our waste, our waste fire. Um, eventually, I'll use the excavator to to create a uh, a composting pit. But there's so much of it now that we really don't have a choice but to, to just to burn. Uh, what we can't be used to make room for everything else right now. I'm repurposing my repurposing my time lapse camera that I used on the garage, and uh, I take take that film every every seven days and save it until the end. So there should be a nice time lapse video of the whole house build here. I'm standing on the, at the front of the property and if I'm looking down this way, this is the bluff. And this is the bluff here and then there's a river right here and that's, that's the bridge we had to cross earlier. But this, this blue tent down here and uh, these guys working, up, I'm going to get you a close up of that, but that's our deep well. It's going in, and um, they're, from, from what I last checked, they're about 60 feet down. 
and uh, they, they could go up to two or three hundred feet depending on where we hit uh, well water so uh, that's that's going to be our water source and I'm going to build a, and close that well and just make it a, some kind of uh, kind of like a spring house and then we'll pump that water up here so I'm, I'm at the bottom of the bluff and I'm just going to give you a, a quick look at the uh, setup for the, the deep well this is the uh, guys kind of temporarily live here while they uh, while they do this because it it could take 40 to 50 days of work here but this is the actual machine that drills and it's obviously not operating now but it's just like an oil rig, you has a diamond bit on it, and uh, for every length of pipe, that's how far deep you go. It looks like those are like 12 inch or 12 foot lengths of pipe, and they use a mud mixture to inject at the top there to lubricate. This is a this is the cutting bit. This is a diamond cutting bit because there are a lot of rocks, and by rocks I mean big boulders that have to be cut through because we obviously can't dig down and remove them. But this is a, an example of some of the the rock that we've encountered. Yeah, just like a scientific experiment, it, this is the, uh, I forget what they call them, you know, when you watch the science shows, but this is basically drilling through a boulder down there, 30 to 40 feet underground, and uh, every once in a while they encounter one of those, and it's, it slows down the process, but we've got a water tank for creating mud and mud is injected comes back out and it's all done to lubricate the, the cutting blade and from here I'm at the bottom of the bluff and that's where I was standing earlier up there and then here's the river and the bridge that we brought the machines across And uh, this, this, these bags of sand are just temporary. I think they're getting ready for the Holy Week, where there will be a lot of uh, people coming to picnic and swim. So they've cut a lot of the overgrowth out and uh, just put that dam up to make it a little bit deeper. 